from border ground nut, also known as jugo beans, and in Shlubu in Sepedi is ranked as the third most important African legume crop after ground nuts and cowpea. The plant is highly adaptable and tolerates harsh conditions better than most crops. Bombara groundnut seed has a high protein content. The seed can be boiled or roasted and also used with other ingredients to make a stew. Furthermore, the flour can be used to make many traditional dishes. The cultivation of Bombara groundnut holds great potential and should be exploited due to its versatile nature and nutritional value. This information video aims to advise farmers of the farming practices that should be employed when cultivating Bombara groundnut to ensure optimal growth and subsequently a good harvest. This video complements the training material prepared on best farming and post-harvest practices. Further detail on these practices mentioned in the video can thus be found in the training manuals. When we look at crop requirements, the best growth for Mabara groundnuts is usually under high temperatures ranging between 20 degrees to up to 28 degrees Celsius. Mabara groundnut is mainly produced under dry land conditions on well-drained soils and the first plantings normally only commence after the first good rains. So Bambara groundnuts need moderate rainfall from sowing right until the stage of flowering and an annual rainfall of between 500 and 600 nanometers, uh, millimeters is required. However, due to cultural considerations in certain parts of South Africa, Bambara groundnuts are normally planted after mid-December. Late plantings in January and early February produce lower yields due to the reduced time left for growing. The seed to be used for planting must be sorted to make sure that they are free from any insect damage, either with holes or wrinkles or mold or any other inert material. It is advised to apply an inoculant to Bambara groundnut seeds. The inoculant, a rhizobacteria which is specific to Bambara, promotes nitrogen fixation. The inoculant can be in the form of a liquid or powder for seed inoculation and must be applied to the seed before planting. The seed should be placed within a clean mixing bowl to which the required volume of the inoculant and also a sticker is added. This sticker helps the inoculant to adhere to the seed. Thereafter, the seeds must be mixed thoroughly to ensure a good coating and then allow to dry briefly before planting. During preparation of the land, the existing weeds, grass and shrubs in the site should be removed. This is followed by ploughing and harrowing using a disc plough and harrow. The field should be ideally marked into blocks of known areas with pathways between the blocks to enhance movement of materials and other farmer farming operations. Bambara groundnut gives the best yields on a deeply ploughed field with a fine seed bed. The level seed bed can be used but should be planted on ridges when very wet conditions prevail. Furrows should be made using a hoe. The recommended spacing is 10 to 15 centimeters in single rows of 45 to 90 centimeters apart. The planting density is usually low, especially when crops are not planted in rows. Now, because the nitrogen requirement is met by natural nitrogen fixation, the seed should be inoculated. It is always advisable to conduct soil tests and apply fertilizer according to the recommended rates. An application of phosphate and potassium fertilizer is usually beneficial. When using chemical fertilizer, usually use a 2 to 3 to 4 NPK mixture and apply a rate of about 1 teacup um, full per 5 meters. After spreading the fertilizer evenly within the furrow, you can use a stick or by hand to mix the fertilizer with the soil. Thereafter, the seed can be planted with about two at a time at three to four centimeters deep. Irrigation 
can be applied when necessary except at maturity and this can usually be done through spray or drip, drip irrigation. Earthing is the process in agriculture of piling soil up around the base of a plant. It can be done by hand or using a, a hoe and this may encourage the development of additional ground nuts and also to facilitate easy harvesting. There are no registered herbicides for Bambara groundnut at the moment. Weed control is done mechanically or by hand. Aphids, leaf hoppers, foliage beetles, pot sucking bugs, and red spider mites are important insect pests of Bambara groundnut. Controlled by one or two applications of insecticide when relevant is necessary. The notable diseases of Bombara groundnut include Fusarium wilt, leaf spot, and peanut clump virus. Deep burial of crop residue assists in controlling certain diseases. Planting on a raised bed is useful in preventing certain diseases such as Fusarium wilt. Fungicides can be applied when needed, but all pesticides must be handled with extreme caution. A growth period of 110 to 150 days is required for the crop to fully develop. Harvesting normally takes place during May and June. Plants should be harvested when they turn yellow or wilt or when approximately about 80% of the pods have matured. Pods can also be harvested while they are still green before they reach maturity as they are more palatable at this stage. However, a delay in harvesting is likely to lead to pod rot under humid and moist conditions. During harvesting, the plant can be harvested in various ways, including by hand lifting and pulling the plant, or by using a plow, or by using a hoe. Plants should be handled with care to reduce pod loss. After the plants have been harvested, they should be left to for about one to two days, after which they can be stacked in piles to dry. The dried pods are then pulled off the plant. The pods and seeds should be thoroughly cleaned under running water to remove any dirt and any residue of pesticides or herbicides. Shelling can be done by hand using a flat stone or any hoist instrument and by hitting the pods that are placed inside a bag. Sorting and grading should be done by hand to separate broken, cracked and diseased seed from full seeds. Seeds are usually sorted according to colour and size. The small seed are consumed at household level, while the bigger ones are usually used for sale. When it comes to packaging, some buyers prefer to buy the seed already cleaned and bagged in plastic bags. The bags must be sealed to prevent entry of insects. Other buyers will want to buy the seed in bulk form. The seed can be packed in polypropylene bags or plastic sacks. It is very important that the seed is well dried before placing into bags. Bombara groundnut is usually stored in shells as the seed is extremely susceptible to weevil damage of the shelling. If shelled, seeds are stored with sand or treated with wood ash to prevent insect damage on seed. Seeds should be stored in a clean, airtight container such as a plastic bucket or a glass jar that are tightly sealed. This will help to avoid damage by insects like weevils and also fungal infestation. Seed should be inspected and, inf and infested or rotting seed should be removed on a regular basis.